What does one say to an ancient Nephilim ghost? I suppose you start with... Let's rock! Yeah! Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on YouTube? It's Filthy, and we're back with another Diablo 3 Season 31 video. This video is applicable to non-season and any season moving forward. It is how to get infinite gems uh, with an infinite puzzle ring method. So get infinite puzzle rings basically is kind of the tag for this video. This will also lead to an awful lot of gold. That is not as valuable to me as it used to be in seasons gone by because we do have Whisper of Atonement. So we have to spend a lot less time grinding our gem levels in jars and empowering rifts but if you want the gold uh, it will be there now if you're like me you like playing lots of different builds across a season you might want to have a little go of the gears of dreadlands demon hunter you may wish to have a go of the lod nova necro you may wish to do in Arius, you might want to do Talrasha. There might be five or six, maybe even 10, 15 builds that you wish to augment up across the course of a season. That will require, of course, a lot of Echoing Nightmares, but it also requires an awful lot of gems. And I'm always early on in a season in particular running try on gems. I need to reroll all the jewelry across all the classes and I need to get those augments uh, on and we need to, gems to convert to do that. So, one thing that I value quite highly in the first few weeks of the season is a puzzle ring. Now, you can just obviously play the game. The game will drop you a puzzle ring every so often. You really want it to be ancient so you can get that super juicy ancient greed realm. Now, you could just simply roll your shards on rings and hope that the game gives you one. Now, with your altar fully unlocked, you, of course, have twice the chance of getting a legendary item. So the blood shard cost per puzzle ring is halved from what it is without the altar. But your chances are still pretty crappy because there are a bazillion rings in the pool. Now, the next thing you could do is you could try and upgrade them. Uh, again, the issue with this is just there are just so many, so many rings in the pool that your chances of actually hitting one uh, are pretty, pretty pants. But what you can do is you can get an infinite supply and all you need to do is make a Witch Doctor and have a Witch Doctor at level 31. So what you want to do is you want to go over to Hadrig, you want to craft some ceremonial knives, you're looking for one with the sockets, you can put a gem of ease into it. It doesn't need any ranks, if you do have a rank 25 or above, this will be slightly faster, you just need to be a little careful that you don't go over level 31. If you go over level 31 this trick will not work anywhere near as well. The reason we're heading for 31 on the Witch Doctor is the Witch Doctor only has 3 rings in the loot pool at 31. and one of those is a puzzle ring and a puzzle ring at level 31 functions exactly the same as a puzzle ring at 70 when you stick it into the cube which is pretty nice now some of the classes have got extra rings in the loot pool like barbarian has band of might necro has the circle of nilusia evolve so you need to be a little careful uh, picking your class and that's why i do witch doctor witch doctor is going to be good for something right your language is offensive and of course, we're doing this on Torment 6 with the altar with the unlock level 2 so that you can use any item at level 1 so you can make a level 70 ceremonial knife. It doesn't have to be a ceremonial knife, but just thematically, we may as well with the Witch Doctor, right? Now, once your Witch Doctor is at level 31, all you're simply going to do is build up some blood shards. So go away and play the fastest speed build you have that will get blood shards quickly quickly split and then you're just going to simply come back and roll rings now the puzzle ring is one of the options in the pool the lyric signet is another and the third one is broken promises now you're not going to get a puzzle ring every time you spend your shards but you will get enough puzzle rings uh, per go to make this worthwhile because you've got one in five chance of getting a legendary uh, we don't get puzzle ring on this particular try but there's a one in five chance you'll get a legendary every time you roll and then there's a one in three chance that it will be a puzzle ring so essentially every time you spend 50 blood shards it's a one in 15 chance that you're going to get a puzzle ring so that is a puzzle ring per 750 blood shards on average that is on average you will of course go many runs without getting a puzzle ring and then next thing you know you'll have three uh, in one go of your blood shards that's just rng it is how it works but let's prove that these level 31 uh, rings actually work so as you can see the stats are pretty low on this 6 to 12 damage uh, these are my level 70 ones with much higher stats on um, and let's go plug this level 31 into the cube and prove that it does indeed work now when running greed's realm the only thing really you need to worry about is making sure the follower has got a broken crown this is the level 31 puzzle ring we pop it in uh, and it opens up a vault. This is Torment 16. So when we go in, 
Uh, it counts as a torment 16 volts, and we're going to get all the goodies. Now, as we run through here, we're hoping to get a gem goblin. Uh, sometimes you get lucky and you will get two gem goblins. Sometimes your luck is not in and you'll get none. But there is always a whole bunch of imperial gems that drop out of these like piles of gold uh, that you that you break up. And I say pretty good, obviously, for gold finds. You can get bloodshot goblins in here. You can get, I think, the blue gelatinous ones. They're the best because they obviously explode into lots of little goblins. Again, it just kind of depends on your look. But then you can sit down, do this for like half an hour, do as many runs as you can in that time, and that will basically get you uh, quite a decent stack of gems. We didn't hit a gem goblin in this particular run, so not great. But if you come back and, and do it again, RNG, it will over time even itself out. Now, you can wait and not kill greed in the hope that the goblins drop out of it i tend to just get on with things and just get on with the next next go of the puzzle ring but that's obviously up to you now of course there is a slight downside to this method you're spending your blood shards on something that can never possibly be good because level 31 gear obviously is no use to you so you have to be okay sacrificing the blood shards for it but i think if you're in a bind for gems uh, that can be good further couple of ideas in relation to the puzzle rings are because we've got visions of enmity and bounty materials are quite easy to come by, you can reforge in the cube if you wish. That will give you an ancient puzzle ring, roughly one in 10 times. So that would be 500 forgotten souls and 50 of each map. I personally think that's a poor use of your materials, particularly if you're trying to push lots of different sets. You want these reforged materials for something really important, like getting a really nice squirt necklace or something very difficult to roll on a different character. But what you can do is this uh, recipe at the back now, the upgrade 100 Primordial Ashes. Again, it'll depend on your crafting materials as to how many Primordial Ashes you've got. I've only got 130, so I can only make one more Primal at the moment. I'm waiting for more to drop. Again, building lots of different things. Everything is kind of being spent on characters. But once this figure goes up to like five, 600, uh, and I know that I've got some in the bank to spare, I've got no problem with shoving a puzzle ring in, making it into a primal one, and then blamming it into the cube, because the the ancient Greed Realm, of course, gives like the goblin field inside, and you're going to get way more gems uh, for each one of those runs. But, beggars can't be choosers, getting ancient puzzle rings is difficult, they're rare to drop it in the game, I don't like rolling shards for rings, as I said earlier, it's probably better to do that on the 31 Witch Doctor, where I know I'm getting a guaranteed return, I would probably rather put my shards into belts on other characters, gloves, shoulders, maybe helmets, things that are quite tricky. Uh, you know, satchels is a really good one on the Demon Hunter, as an example. Uh, off hands on Wizard, off hands on Necro. So I think I can get much better value for my shards on something else. But if I need gems, then I'm basically doing that trick with the Witch Doctor, running uh, rifts as fast as I can, build them at blood shards, spend them at 31. Every 750 shards, roughly, I'm going to get a puzzle ring, and then I will use them and get the gems. That is the tip video, guys. I hope you found it useful. I hope you're enjoying season at 31. I'm going to go do some gem farming. I'm going to create some more builds and uh, make some more videos. I'll be back as soon as I can with more content. Take it easy, guys. Peace.